Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to be talking about what is underneath this rail right here. And that is gonna be the all new Roscoe 12.5 inch patrol length gas system barrel. All right, in the modern era of building rifles or choosing a rifle, it seems to be that gas systems, gas lengths or barrel lengths cause more arguments than whether to cut your peanut butter and jelly sandwich in squares or in triangles. Cause there's definitely a distinct way that you eat both of those. But if you read a lot of forums or you watch a lot of videos on what barrel length, what gas system length, what buffer weight, what buffer spring to go with, you can really get lost because there's a ton of information out there and we all have to kind of wade through that and all of the options that are available. And we are making the choice to go with what barrel we want, what gas length system we want, and how much weight we wanna put in the end of this because every piece of that will affect how this thing runs, how long it lasts, and how much wear and tear you're gonna put on all of those parts. Now, before we get into the specifics on this new patrol length 12.5 gas system, we're gonna pay the bills here with the help of Tack Pack. Now, Tack Pack is a subscription box that you can get set up for yourself or somebody that you know and love monthly that sets you up with gear that you might want, like, or need to get things done outdoors or out on the rain. Some of the coolest things I have gotten from Tack Pack are going to be the reaction rod, so you can build your upper receiver and torque that thing down to spec without issue, and cool little parts like anti-walk pins for that trigger system in your lower receiver. Go ahead and check them out online. Sign up is super easy and use code TC to get yourself a free swag pack. So throughout my life, I've either owned or been issued a lot of different rifle barrel lengths. Everything from 10, 3, 10, 5 style Mark 18s, 14 and a half, 12 and a half, 13 sevens, uh, 16s. I've fired the old 20 inch versions of the original design of the AR. So I've had to experience a lot of these things out on the range and each one of them is going to be quite different. They're gonna feel quite different. Recoil is gonna be different. And you're going to get different ballistics and accuracy out of all of these different lengths. We are gonna get a little bit technical in this video because we need to understand how the DI system in these works. So what is that? A direct impingement gas system. We need to understand how this all relates between the length of the barrel, where the gas port is, how long the gas system is, how big that port is, and our dwell time. It's really not difficult to understand. It really just has to do with how much pressure and how long that system is under pressure. So we're just gonna go over the basics, but a little bit of technical stuff coming your way. And to do that, we're gonna take a quick up close look at what Roscoe is calling their 12.5 inch patrol length gas system. So you guys can really understand the differences between this and the carbine or the mid length and everything else that is out there. Then we'll talk about the performance and everything I did to this out on the range to kind of get a real feel for what this system is going to feel like and send this out to me for testing. So if you haven't seen my SLR build, when I built that rifle, I used a 13 seven inch Roscoe barrel on it. And it was hands down one of the best gassed and well-performing rifle barrels that I've used in quite some time. So when I heard the rumors of this new fangled 12.5 patrol system that's kind of proprietary to Roscoe, going around on the internet, I reached out to them. They were cool enough to send one out. So big thank you to them. But just so you know, this and the spare barrel that you're gonna see for viewing purposes were sent out by Roscoe. All right, I'm gonna give you one good, solid, up close look at this thing before we start getting into this proprietary barrel and everything. This Cobalt Kinetics with this 12.5 is Awesome, one of the nicest rigs I've ever been able to test, but we gotta get rid of this so we can talk about all the parts. All right, I have a couple of barrels here on the table, but the one we're talking about specifically today is the Roscoe, flip it around so you can see it, K9, and this is the Sage Dynamics kind of labeled barrel. And we'll talk about what's different about this one between the profile, the gas port size, and compare it to the different gaff length sizes that are in like the carbine mid-length and then the canine profile which is their patrol length that's what they've named it 
but there are some differences here. So the journal up here that your gas block would fit on is a standard uh, 750. Very, very common for gas blocks of this size. It is a proprietary gas port size. So that is your gas port. That allows uh, the gas to go up in there and back through the tube. If you don't know, that's what that little hole right there is. It does come with a single dimple on the underside for your gas block of choice. And as you can see here, the contour of that barrel is quite different than many other things out there. As compared to, uh, this is a blackout. This is another very nice barrel, but you can see the contour between these two is going to be quite different um, just overall, all the way down until you get to that gas block journal, which is where they're gonna be the same size. But overall, good look at more of a government profile style barrel and the barrel that Roscoe has put out so you understand. So let's talk about, as I drop these down, they're gonna be loud. Let's talk about what the difference in the gas tubes are. So down here, you're going to see, actually, I'm gonna move these up. That is gonna be a standard mid-length gas tube. This is going to be a carbine length gas tube. So you can see it is quite a bit shorter on the end. This is the neck end that goes into the gas key on your bolt and carrier group. And then this is the patrol length. So you can see it's ever so slightly longer than the carbine and just a tad bit shorter than the actual mid link. So that's gonna have a big impact on how this thing operates and the amount of gas that goes down this. Now, the barrel here from Roscoe is going to have an 11 degree target crown there on the end, which is what they specifically wanted. They felt that performed the best. Uh, it's gonna be 416R stainless steel. So this is not that machine gun select fire style steel known for being very, very accurate, but it will have a little bit less of a life than that 4150 chrome olive vanadium that you may be well aware of. So let's quickly talk about the port size, the length of that and the dwell time and all of this stuff and what this actually means here. All right, so now that you've had a good chance to see this thing underneath all that without the rail and in the rifle, I've got my display pieces here and I really wanna to explain to you how this thing works. So in this barrel, as the bullet's going down and all that gas is trapped back here. As it gets to that gas port, that gas bleeds off into what would be the gas block. It goes through the hole in the bottom of the gas tube. And as that gas is pressurized through that tube, it interfaces with the gas key on the bolt. And that is what unlocks and blows the bolt back and cycles your weapon. Now, I know that's a little rudimentary, but that is all there really is to it. Now, there's different pressures and different weights and everything, but that in a nutshell is how this thing works. One of the other things you need to pay attention to that is very important when picking a gas system is what is called dwell time. Now, dwell time is the amount of time that that bullet is in here from when it passes the gas port, pressurizes the whole gas tube in the system, begins running that bolt, and the time it leaves the barrel. This distance called the dwell time can make a huge difference on whether your rifle performs or doesn't perform. And another big thing is how big is that port in the barrel? How large is that hole drilled out in the barrel? Because that is gonna determine how much of that gas, how much volume is gonna be in there, and how much force is ultimately gonna be put on that bolt and carrier group as it's being wrenched back and forth like a jackhammer. Too big, too much, too little, doesn't work right. That's just kind of the basics of how that gas port works. Now there is tons of research and articles and videos out there explaining all of those things way more scientifically, way more in depth, I just wanted you to have the basic nuts and bolts if you are kind of new. And if you're interested in any of that stuff, I will leave all of the links for all those parts at the build list, or you can check out tacticalconsiderations.com, which will have all the lists for everything I've ever done. Now that you understand the basics of it, like why? Why did we design a completely new gas length in a 12.5? So if you've ever owned a 12.5 barrel before, you can get them in carbine length and you can get them in mid length. Carbine lengths, from my experience, are a little bit overgassed. I have some of them where I have to run heavy springs and H3 buffers just to get them to cycle appropriately, especially once you throw a suppressor on there. Sometimes in the mid-length, they just don't have enough oomph where they need to really over uh, overport that gas because your dwell time from when the bullet passes the port to the end of the barrel just doesn't give it enough oomph to throw that heavy bolt backwards. In my experience, you can lighten things up in the back with a very light bolt and carrier group, but ultimately, it's better to control over gassing up front than it is to try to lighten things up in the rear. 
Um, it just seems to be a little bit more difficult to tune things up than it is to tune them down. So for all of those reasons, Roscoe set out to design a 12.5 that's going to work in all circumstances, whether you're running it without a can or whether you're running it with a can and not have to mess around with adjustable gas blocks or changing everything out in the rear end of this thing so you can run a suppressor from time to time. And it took them about two years to design this in that specific length with a specific gas port size, somewhere right in between that carbine and mid-length systems. And I'm sure some of you out there are wondering, why not a 10.5, why not a 10.3 or a 14.5 or something like that? Because remember, big army and a lot of the military went to a 14.5 inch barrel for a very long time because after about a decade of testing, they figured out that was the best compromise between accuracy, dependability, durability, and usability in urban environments. That doesn't mean it was the best. It meant it was the best compromise of everything for that circumstance. But there are advantages to having shorter barrels where you're not giving up a ton of velocity or accuracy, but getting a little bit less weight, a little bit more versatility in vehicles or urban environments without sacrificing durability in that bolt and carrier system by forcing too much gas back in there and really causing it to be a violent action. And 12.5 inches is really about as short as you can go and stay in between that very soft recoiling mid-length system and maybe a little bit heavier recoiling carbine system and still get all the reliability and durability that you're looking for. And for those of you out there that need hashtag all the specs, here you go. Let's get into that overall performance out there. So this thing ran sweet and I've had a lot of 10.5 style guns before that were really over gassed to the point where I had to put like H3 heavy springs, adjustable gas blocks and all that stuff. A few of them I've got totally dialed in and there's one that's just kicking my butt and I can't seem to get it to run right off the can and on the can without changing things around. So the 12.5 ran like a banshee out there. And because I really wanted to know how this thing was gonna feel under that recoil, I ran a lot of 62 grain ammo through this thing, which was expensive. So that ammo is pricey right now. But I also ran the 55 grain stuff to make sure it would, I didn't have any issues with any of it. And I ran this thing until it got hot. And I wanted to do that to see if there were gonna be any issues with this gas system, with that barrel length or with that barrel contour when it came down to pushing that bolt and carrier reliably when it's cold and when it's hot. And I'm happy to report it gave me not a hiccup out there on the range and I'm actually really excited to build another one with this spare 12.5 that I got. So stand by for what I have planned for that in a future video. So what are the overall benefits and feel to this? The recoil impulse was very nice out there, especially since this specific one is tuned with that A5 buffer system, standard lower with a standard carbine buffer in it and it performed very, very nicely. Like I said, they've got the gas tuning down to where it's gonna cycle very reliably, extremely reliably, didn't have any issues, but it's gonna give you the most minimum recoil impulse, which are better with this out on the range. Now the 416R stainless steel barrel, 416R is known for being more accurate than 4150 chrome olive vanadium. Probably not a lot of arguments on that one, but the thing you need to pay attention to, if you're gonna rig dump after mag dump to try and melt things down, 4150 is the way to go, and Roscoe has options for that as well. The overall benefit of this system is you are getting the shortest barrel with the longest gas system, which is gonna give you the lightest felt recoil, be very versatile in movement, and still give you the ultimate and reliability out there on the range, and it's not going to tear apart your bolt and carrier group by being too gassed up. Now, I know some of you out there have been eyeballing this build right here. This is the Cobalt Kinetic setup. Uh, I gotta say, outstanding right up front, but it's gonna get its own video. Sorry to break your hearts today. I need a couple more range strip. I need some more rounds. I need to run it with a can to give you my overall feeling. So the overall review on this whole rig here will be coming up very soon. And now that I've broken some of your hearts by not doing a review of this full thing here today, I am sorry, but if you're interested in any of this stuff you did see here, I will leave the links at the build list. That's the first link in the description or pinned down in the comments or you can go to tacticalconsiderations.com and check out everything I've ever done with all the links because we can't post them here on YouTube anymore. I still get asked it all the time. We're just not allowed to post direct links to any of this stuff here on this platform. So check that link out, it will take you there. Huge thank you to all of my Patreons and to Roscoe for sending the barrel out and for True Shot Gun Club for giving me the ammo to test out this specific one here today. Big thanks to all of them. And of course, to all of you out there watching, viewing, liking and comment, all that stuff is a huge help to the channel and I appreciate and respond in kind to all of the comments out there. Now get out there on the range, have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. 
I will see you all on the next one.